Welcome to Beadaholic's Learn to Bead video series, an ongoing series where we explore the basics of creating your own beaded jewelry. In the first segment, we covered beads, all their shapes, sizes, and varieties available. And in this segment, we're going to cover findings. So when you make your own jewelry, you're going to need to use a combination of beads and findings. So the first finding category I want to cover is actually um, bead spacers which are these little guys right here. You can see I've used them in this bracelet. A bead spacer is going to do just that. It's gonna space out your bead strands to keep them neat and tidy. And then a strand reducer is gonna take multiple strands, like we can see right here in this bracelet as well, and it's gonna reduce them to just one strand or maybe two, there's different types available but basically you're reducing your number of strands. We also have links. Links do what they say. They link up two different segments. So you can have a beaded segment coming off the end. You can link links to links so that they uh, create a continual strand. They're a handy tool to have in your beading arsenal. Filigree also falls under the heading of findings as well. Filigree is a lot of fun. It can create a lot of pizzazz to your jewelry and create make it into a statement piece quite easily and you can always bead along the edges where there's open um, loops and holes. In the finding category as well we also have bales. Bales are great because they take a pendant type bead and they turn it into a usable pendant which you can actually string right onto some chain or a beaded segment. We have our pinch pendants which basically you just put onto a bead and through the holes right there. Now you can go ahead and put it into the chain. Here's another type of pinch pendant, really simple to use. We have our slider bales. They have an open hoop with them that you can go ahead and you can slide onto a chain. We have our shape on bales, which you can go ahead and just put through uh, the hole in a bead, close that back up and that creates a way of stringing it to a strand. And then we have our glue on bales. These are great because you just put a dab of glue and then you can go ahead and put a cabochon or any other type of material you want to put on them. And now you can go ahead and string those as well. A very common finding that you're going to be using a lot of are head pins, which basically have a stopper at the end, whether it's a decorative ball, it can be a decorative flower. Oftentimes they'll have a flat head. So what these are going to be is they're going to be the last part of your dangle because there's nothing to hook them to. Now, if you want to have it be a continual part of a dangle, you'll use an eye pin. An eye pin has a little hoop at the bottom. You Go ahead, you'll string your beads on, and then you can continue connecting more items to it. This little earring right here has actually used a head pin down at the bottom. You can see that it comes to a stop. There's nowhere else you can go. And then for the middle section, it's actually used an eye pin. And then uh, at the ends of each of the um, head pin and the eye pin, we've created a simple wire loop, which is a technique we cover in another video. Another very common finding you're going to use an awful lot of are going to be jump rings. These here are open jump rings. Basically, it means that they're open. They have a cut in them and it allows you to open them. They're pliable. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. You can see there's actually a triangle jump ring in there. There's also oval jump rings in addition to round. A closed jump ring is a jump ring that looks very similar to an open jump ring, except for it is completely closed. There is no opening. So what you would then end up doing is you would take an open jump ring and connect it to a closed jump ring, or you would take a dangle or a wrapped wire loop, simple wire loop, whatever you've created and connect it to that. And it's not going to go anywhere. There is a jump lock, which is very much like an open jump ring, except for it has a special locking mechanism. We cover how to use a jump lock in another video as well, so check that out if you want to figure out how to create a very secure bond using jump locks. We also have split rings. Split rings are very much like your car keychain. It's a coil of several rows of wire, and there is an opening on each side. You can see I could put my fingernail right under there and that's going to create a very secure bond for whatever you're attaching it to. It's not going to be going anywhere once you get your loop in there. Moving along, we have bead caps. Bead caps are decorative flourishes that you can add to your jewelry. You can put them on either side of your bead. It creates an added embellishment there. 
You can put them snug up to your bead or you can space them so that they're a little bit further away depending upon what you want. And then we also have bead cones. Bead cones can work the same way as a bead cap. They can be a decorative embellishment or they can actually be used as a strand reducer which is what they were used here in this bracelet. We took six beaded strands and we put them through a bead cone. We wired them up in here and then it took six down to one, which is really nice when you're finishing off a piece of jewelry. Once your bead lengths are all linked together and properly spaced using jump rings and links and strand reducers, you're going to need a way to finish off your necklace or bracelet or whatever piece of jewelry you're creating. And for that, you're going to need a clasp. So we have several different types available. We have a toggle clasp, which I've used on this bracelet right here. And basically, you just go ahead and can feed the bar through the uh, round shape and that's going to secure it. They too come in a variety of uh, shapes and colors. You then have a lobster clasp. These are pretty familiar to everyone. They have a little spring action in them. You can then uh, attach them to a jump ring, make the jump ring the actual hoop on the other end of the clasp, or you can go ahead and actually connect it right to a link and a chain. You have the hook and eye, which has like a little figure eight um, piece of wire that works as one end of the clasp. And then you have the hook, which just goes right through it. You have S-shaped, uh, pretty self-explanatory here, just shaped like an S. You have spring ring clasps, which um, probably the most common one that you see most often. It just has a little lever that you pull back on and it will um, work that way to attach to a jump ring or again, another link in a chain. A fun little clasp is actually a magnetic clasp. You can see right here, it's got two parts to it. Each one has a magnet and then they just hold together based upon the magnetic force. And then the final type of clasp, which you'll come across quite often, is a barrel clasp. It's like a screw and it just screws together for you. But how do you connect your strands to your clasps? And more often than not, what you're going to be using are crimp beads. Uh, crimp beads come as uh, like a round bead, which looks much like a seed bead. They also come in a tube form. They work the same way. Basically, they're creating a secure bond for your beading wire um, to connect to the to the clasp and it prevents you from having to tie knots, which can come undone or try to find another way of connecting that beading wire. For crimp beads and crimp tubes, you need a special tool. It's called a crimping plier. You'll see that it's got a couple little indentations here and we explore in another video exactly how to crimp a bead and how to use a crimping plier. Very handy, you'll use a lot of them. Um, you can see here on this necklace, we have a toggle clasp and we've actually gone ahead and used a crimp tube. And that is what a crimp tube looks like once you've crimped it with the crimping pliers. It's basically folded over onto itself and it's actually secured the beading wire there for you. Now, if you did not really like the look of a crimp tube or a crimp bead, there's these handy little things called crimp bead covers. They're very decorative. And basically what you would do is you would take, not your fingers because you usually need a, a tool, but a chain nose pliers or something like that. You just fit it over the top of your crimp bead and then using your pliers, you just squeeze it shut. That's another option you have for finishing off your jewelry piece. Now, if you're not making a bracelet or a necklace and say you're making a pair of earrings, you're gonna to have to explore a whole nother category of findings. There's a lot of choices for you when it comes to earrings. If you don't have your ears pierced, you can use clip-on earrings. What they do is they have spring action here that actually clamps the earring to your ear and then they have an area where you can glue on your earring. So let's say actually you just did a simple little um, cabochon earring, you would just glue that right there and that would be your whole earring. You have earring hooks right here. These are French hooks. They have a little uh, loop at the bottom which allows you to hang a beaded segment from it. So let's say you've taken a head pin or an eye pin, you've put some beads on and you've created a simple wire loop at the top or a wrapped wire loop. Both of those techniques we teach in another video segment. Um, and you just connect it to the little loop at the bottom. Usually you can just um, open that loop the same way you open a jump ring. Then we have lever back earrings. Here you go and you just open them like so and then they close and this part here is what goes through your ear. You attach your beads 
to the little um, hoop at the end. We have thread on earrings right here. You just take that part, put that through your ear. And then this is of course where your, you know, the actual place where your ear is um, threaded through. And then you have hoops, pretty common. And then you have earring posts, uh, different shapes and sizes. Usually they have some type of loop at the bottom, which allows you to attach your beaded dangle, or they might have a flat back, which again, you can just glue a cabochon to or some other object which you want. And if you're using an earring post, you're gonna need an earring back. There's several choices available, whatever is more comfortable for you. These have a little plastic rim around them. They fit very nice and snug against the ear. And then here's more of the common earring back. Another finding that goes along with the earrings are chandelier earrings. These are a lot of fun. They save a lot of work and you can have a really elaborate looking pair of earrings that you create with not a lot of effort. You just hang dangles from the little hooks that are available. You can use the same chandelier earring actually as a strand reducer if you want as well. You can see that you could put multiple strands of jewelry and then have it come to um, a peak and just have one strand, one hoop that you connect to your earring part. You're probably thinking at this point that there are a ton of findings out there and you're absolutely right as you dive into it even more. There's going to be more findings you're going to explore, which we didn't actually cover here because we're trying to cover the most popular and the ones you're going to come across most often as you start your journey down the wonderful road of beading. Um, one I want to mention really quick are fold over crimps. Uh, these are some of my favorite products because they're so simple. Basically you take just a piece of leather or micro suede, any type of cording, and you take these little crimps, you put the ribbon or the leather right through it, you fold over each end, and it creates a secure bond. Next, we have ribbon crimps. These are great because you take a piece of ribbon, and then you take these little pinch crimps, you just put the end of the ribbon into the crimp, and you pinch it shut using some pliers. Those are a great way of quickly finishing off a jewelry piece, and then you can just attach a clasp to the end. Other findings, which are a lot of fun, include ring findings. There's a whole variety available. You can see some of them here. This is a bezel ring finding, and this is what it looks like when you've actually filled it. Here's a glue-on finding. It's got a flat disc, and you just adhere some glue to it, and then you can put an object onto it. And then we also have beaded ring findings, beadable rings, which are fun because you can take a bunch of head pins or eye pins, and you can bead them and they look like this. They've got little rings right there available for you to attach your loops to. And the final category I want to cover is one that's really popular right now. It is bezels. There are an infinite number of bezels out there right now, which is so much fun. You can fill them with resin. You can uh, make collage pendants. You can put a photograph in them. You can do whatever you want. You can even set down a capuchon into them. Basically what a bezel is, is it's a framework which is raised and then you usually have a depressed flat center area and they do come in all shapes. There are even actually two-sided bezels which are fun and there's earring bezels as well. I hope you enjoyed this tour of findings. In our next Learn to Bead video, we will go over all the stringing materials which you can use to combine your beads and findings into works of jewelry art.